So today we're going to be going over evaluating expressions with one variable. We're actually going to be covering more than this today, but this is just the beginning of our lesson. So what is a variable? Some of the examples that I have gotten from people is a variable might be some number. A lot of people suggested that it's going to be a letter. And many people said it represents the unknown. And that's completely true. The official definition of a variable is a factor that is liable to vary or change. The reason I decided to use this official definition is for several reasons. We look at the word liable and we think about what that means. It's a pretty tough word to look at, but when we break it down, we heard something like shyly who said reliable, which means that you can trust on it. You can believe in someone for it. We hear liable, we know it sounds like likely. So that means a factor that is likely, you know, reliable, it's, it's a good chance of it happening, likely it's a good chance of it happening, to vary. We see that vary in variable or change. Another word that we see V-A-R-Y, very, that definition of very, in is various. Yeah, it's not the Y, but still, we see that word various, which various means different kinds, just like the, the variable will be different numbers. So, first, if we looked at solving this, what we're given is we're given an expression. In this expression, it is A plus 4, and it tells us that a is 7. So what we do is as simple as plugging 7 into a. We get 7 plus 4 is equal to 11. That's simple. Here's this next one. 15 over k. And when we see that over, we know it means divide, just like those dots are placeholders. So 15 over k. If k is 3, we plug that in. We get 15 over 3. When we simplify, 15 divided by 3 is 5. Here it gets a little trickier. We have 2d plus 3. I had several students give me several different answers for this one. Some of the answers they gave me included 31 and 19. Now, we're going to look at this one. The first thing we know is that we have to plug in 8 to D, just like we've been doing in all of the other ones. Now, here is where we had our issue. One person put it in where they made it 28 plus 3 equals 31. But that's not the case. Whenever we see something touching, so we see this number touching that letter right here, that's going to be multiplication. So it becomes 2 times 8 plus 3. Now, we also saw people add first, but we know we have to follow PEMDAS, which we're going to go over. 2 times 8 is 16, plus 3 makes our answer 19. So, we follow PEMDAS. Many of you remember it as, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. What's important about PEMDAS, however, is that we need to know that what the terms mean. I'll go over that on the next slide. Now, when we're doing this, we know that multiplication and division are actually the same thing. They're just reciprocals of one another, just as we learned in our last lesson. Additionally, addition and subtraction are the same thing, just opposites of one another. So if you have a problem where it has division first and then later we have multiplication, we don't need to do the multiplication first. What we do in those cases is we always go from left to right. PEMDAS stands for parentheses, exponent, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. And again, multiplication and division are the same thing, and addition and subtraction are the same thing. Here's a good example. We have 2 
and in parentheses, 3 plus 5. Our 2 is touching the parentheses, which means it's going to be multiplication. We solve our parentheses first and get 8. It's still that multiplication, and 2 times 8 is 16. We apply it later, but let's look at this one first. So, if we solve this, 13 plus 6 over y, we plug this in. We're going to get 13 plus 6 over 6. Whenever a number is over itself, we know that it's going to be equal to 1, which means our answer is 14. Here again, all we do is plug in. We plug in the 5. It makes it 4 times 5 minus 12. That's 20 minus 12, which is equal to 8. Now we're going to look at evaluating expressions with two variables. This is pretty much the exact same thing as we've done before, except this time we have two numbers to plug in. Here's this first one. We have 6 plus 4 over a plus b over 3. We simply plug in. What we get is 6 plus 4 over 4, which is 1, plus 3 over 3, which is 1. That leads us to get 6 plus 1 plus 1, which is equal to 8. Here's another one, and this one's a little trickier because now we're dealing with exponents. So our first step would be to plug in for m. If we plug in 5 for m, we get 10 times 5, which is 50. Now, we're going to add. We have an exponent here. So when we plug it in, we get 4 squared over 4. When we look back at our PEMDAS, we know we can't do the division first. We have to do parentheses. There are none. Exponents. We have one. And then we're able to do multiplication division. So let's look over our exponents for a second. When we have exponents, 4 to the power of 2 commonly known as 4 squared, just means 4 times 4. 4 to the third power means 4 times 4 times 4, because there are 1, 2, 3. So if we looked at this one, what would it be? We have 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4. Since there's 6 of them, it would be 4 to the 6th power. The reason that this happens when we see it is if we took a square, and one side of the square was 4, and the other side of the square was 4, it would be 4 times 4, which is 16. That's where we get the term 4 squared. So here, we have 4 squared. We already solved that. That's 16. So now, what we have is, I'm going to go to a new slide, 50 plus 16 over 4. We have to simplify and divide. 16 divided by 4 is 4. So we get 50 plus 4, and our answer is 54. The same steps are followed here. So we have 8 times 6 minus 6 times 5. 8 times 6 is 48. 6 times 5 is 30. So our answer is 18. Let's look at this next one. This one looks a lot more complicated, but it's actually just as simple. We just have to plug in each in the correct place. So for our first one, we get 8 times 2. For the second one, we get 3 times 5. Here, there's no variable, so we keep it as a minus 10. And then lastly, we get 4 squared. If we look at this, if we break it down, it becomes 16 plus... 15 
minus 10 plus 16. 16 plus 15 is 31, minus 10 is 21, plus 16 is 37. What we're doing, by the way, is called combining like terms, because all of these are numbers. Here we enter combining like terms. When we go over the words, we know terms. When we think in English, it means words. So in math, it means numbers or variables. Same thing we learned. Like, if you are like someone else, you are similar to them. So when we're combining like terms, we're combining similar numbers or variables. Here's an example that everybody should know. 2 plus 3. When we solve it, we get 5. But why do we get 5? Not how do we get 5, but why? We get 5 because 2 and 3 are both numbers. So we're able to combine them. They're both numbers, which means they are the same type of terms. They are like terms. What about this one? 2 plus x. Are these like terms? No, they are not. 2 is a number and x is a variable, so we can't combine them. The answer is still 2 plus x. That's all we can get. Here, we get 3x minus 2x. In these situations, they both have an x, so they are indeed like terms. Then, we just treat that as actual subtraction, but we keep the x at the end. 3 minus 2 is 1. When we write this, by the way, 1x is just the same as x. These are combining like terms. x plus 7x. Once again, this is the same as 1x. We don't necessarily have to write that, though. x plus 7x. If I have 1x and I add 7x's, I get 8x's. Now, we're stepping into grown-up math. Here, we have lots of different letters, but we have to combine the like terms. So, for example, when we look at this, here we have 3a. And again, over here, we have another a. What's important to know, though, is you always have to circle the operation that comes before the like term. You have to, you have to circle if it's addition, subtraction, anything like that. Then we look at our b's. Here, we have 2b and we have negative b. Lastly, we look at our c's. We have negative 4c. So now we're able to combine the ones that are similar, and I've color-coded it for us. So we get 3a plus 6a. That's 9a. Then we get 2b minus b. That's b, or 1b. And lastly, we have minus 4c. There's nothing else we can combine it with, so it's just minus 4c. Since we don't know what the variables stand for, we don't know what a, b, or c equal, this is our answer. We get an expression as our answer. Here's another example. In this case, if we can't color code, one thing I like to do is I'll draw a box around the similar terms, and then I'll circle other ones, and then maybe I put a triangle around them. If the triangle is too difficult, sometimes I like to put a little wiggle so we can see. And it's just easy so that we can identify the terms. So in this case, 7a minus 5a becomes 2a. Then we have minus 3b. There's nothing else we can combine it with. It's the only one in the circle. Minus 3b. And then lastly, we have 2c plus 8c, which we get 10c. Just like our previous example, we don't know what the variables stand for. We don't have numbers. So our answer is the simple expression. It's just the expression. It also works with other variables. 
Variables can be anything. They can be stars, hearts, smiley faces, anything you'd like it to be. So in this case, when we combine it, we have seven star plus two star. And we have negative three heart, you have to circle that operation, plus four heart. Seven star plus two star is nine star. Then, negative three heart plus four heart. That sounds complicated, negative three plus four, but we know with our fact families, that's the same as four minus three. And four minus three is one. So we would get plus, and we could say one heart, or we could just put one heart. That's it. It's as simple as that. And similarly, we don't know what the variables stand for, so that's the answer, a simple expression.